He's hitting the tug, but I'm here. Pastor Jerry, three times God just brought this to me in the last two minutes. Remember what Casanova prophesied that night? About building? A building? Yep. Not going to cost you anything. Amen. On my way, you know. She runned away. She's on a good bike tour. <laughs> She's probably on okay, If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Oh, that's a good right there. Matthew chapter 6. Y'all are like me, you get better looking every day. <laughs> You're better looking with color. Now some of the doctors and nurses would tell me that. You know, inside I'm feeling like just flatlined, and they're like, "You look pretty good today." And I'm like, "Well, I tell people I get better looking every day." You know, they laugh. <laughs> so Matthew chapter six. We're familiar with this. We often call it the Lord's Prayer, but it's more of a declaration, if you will. There's principles here. I'm not going to break it all down. I don't know if, how many of you were, well, y'all are old like me, so you were around in the 80s. I don't think there's anybody that wasn't, but remember Larry Lee? Yes. Yeah. His teaching on this. Anyway, it was real good, but I'm not teaching on that today. But anyway, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, Jesus is speaking. He says, in this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. The part I want to hone in on this morning is verse 10, where he says, Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, amen. In the Gospel of Luke, the 11th chapter, verse 2, in that translation, it says, He said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then it continues on. Yes, Jesus was telling his disciples how to pray. But especially in that part when he says, When you pray, say, that means to speak, to affirm over, to maintain. So when we're praying, we're not just praying, but we are saying, we are speaking, we are declaring, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. The part I really want to talk about this morning is on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Say that with me this morning, on earth, on earth. as it is in heaven. Yeah. Say it again, on earth. As it, as it is in heaven. If it's in heaven, we need to believe God for it on earth. Amen. Yes, amen. I'll say that again. Yeah. If it's in heaven, we need to believe God for it here on earth. Yes. Now, we're not going to experience everything in heaven. I know in Revelation it says, He'll wipe away all tears from our eyes. There'll be no more sorrow and all that. There's still grief here because we still lose loved ones. But as we know, we don't have to mourn and grieve as those who have no hope. But I'm going to get into, and we're familiar with a lot of this that I'm getting into today. But we need to remind it of a lot of this. And we need to realize the authority that we've been given by our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. He's no longer walking on this earth. But you are. And I am. And he's given each and every one of us authority and power. Glory. So this is more than just a prayer. It is a declaration. And when we decree and declare in faith, and even when I talk about decreeing and declaring, I'm not saying you can just say any goofy thing and say, because I've decreed and declared it's coming to pass. No, it needs to be inspired by the Holy Ghost or it needs to come by His Word, Amen. come from His Word. But that's a powerful statement. And if we realize the impact of that and truly believe God when we say, Thy kingdom come, and by the way, His kingdom's already here. So even that part, his kingdom's already here. He says, kingdom's among you. 
He demonstrated his kingdom when he walked on this earth. We need to be doing the same thing. So it's more, and that's why I've titled this, On Earth As It Is In Heaven. It's his will that we need to believe God for. Amen. On earth as it is in heaven. So we're declaring for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. What's that mean? First off, again, it's believing for his will to be done. I said his will. Not just your own carnal fleshly will. Certainly not the will of the enemy. Certainly not the will of corrupt politicians. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. But it's his will that we need to believe to be done on this earth as it, has, as it is in heaven. Second, it means that whatever his will is in heaven, that's what we're calling for on this earth. So whatever it's like in heaven, we're believing God for on this earth. What is his will? There's several things. One of them, and I get this from 3 John verse 2. 3 John verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things. Say all things. All things. What's that mean? All things. All things. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Prosperity does include money. Oh, you know any prosperity preachers? Yeah. But I'm not greedy and I don't go chasing it. I chase him. Yeah. And he meets my needs. Come on. Poverty is under the curse. We'll say that again. Poverty is under the curse. We're no longer under the curse. Right. We're under the blessing of Abraham. Yes. And Abraham sure wasn't poor and broke, busted, disgusted. That's right. <laughs> but prosperity doesn't just include that. It includes a whole slew of other things. So, beloved, I wish above this is his will on earth as it is in heaven. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Amen. Sickness and disease isn't God's will. That's right. Leukemia and cancer isn't God's will. Amen. Diabetes isn't God's will. Amen. Go down the list of the sicknesses and diseases that many of us battle. That isn't God's will. Amen. Now, I believe in a lot of areas are things we need to do. To get rid of it. Amen. And I don't just mean the decreeing and declaring. Mm -hmm. We need to eat right. Live right. Yeah. That's right. So some of it. You know, and I know. It's funny because I hear this a lot. Well everybody in my family is this. That's because everybody in your family eats like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Well everybody in my family has been an alcoholic. Thank God for deliverance. Oh, yeah. I don't know how many of you know their testimony. He was her drug dealer at one time. <laughs> True story. You need to talk to him sometime and get that full testimony. But God set them both free, delivered them. Hallelujah. But in some areas, there's things we can do. I get it. Some things are genetic and all that. But does that mean we got to settle for that? Does that mean just because I get up in age, arthritis has got to set in? No, he's a trespasser. That's right. Amen. He ain't a nice guy either. And a lot of the other stuff that comes with old age. I rebuke dementia in the name of Jesus. Amen. And all that other garbage. And so many battle. But I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. It's God's will, church, that we. His sons and daughters walk in health. That's right. Sickness, disease, it's a trespasser. Doesn't belong in our bodies. I thank God when he does it the miraculous way. And I sure would have preferred that. Amen. Than going through almost three months of what I've gone through. But I've still, as I've said before, seen his hand of blessing and protection through it all. <coughs> God will anoint medicine. Amen. I said God will anoint medicine. Right. Yes, Majority of church folk will be dead without it. We'll be all curled up in a ball and pain and everything else. We need to get to the point. And again, I'm not talking condemnation and all that. But we need to continue to develop our faith and continue on earth as it is in, in heaven. And believe God to deliver us and heal us. So that we don't need all the medicines and all the other stuff. Amen. Just like some of them, they've been giving me. 
Well, it'll help me in this area, but in this area, it hurts me. Like they give me the LASIK. I don't know if some of you have been on that. Every night, every hour, every hour and a half. Doesn't matter how deep I'm sleeping, a trip to the bathroom. One or the other, they got me on two different heart medicines. And that's the other area that I'm believing God for. He is restoring my heart in the name of yes. Jesus. But the chemo did damage to it, but that's temporary, subject to change, and it will. But they got me on two types of medicines for it. And I've had to, actually, well, one of them, they already had half a dose. The other one, I've had to cut it to half a dose because it makes my blood pressure drop too low. Low 90s and 80s. I shared this last week, but some of you didn't hear it. Uh, my recliner's by our sliding door, and the dogs were out. Started and went upstairs to take a shower. So, and again, I got up slow. So I got up slow, went behind it, opened the sliding door, and let the dogs in. Next thing I knew, the recliner slipped back. I'm face planted on it on the floor. Oh, no. Don't even know how I got that. Well, again, it was from the low blood pressure. So here I'm on one med that's supposed to help heal my heart up. So it doesn't have to work as hard, but then it's bringing my blood pressure down too low. So again, there's, and then I, I know you all seen the commercials where they advertise this medicine. And then they go down the whole list. Yeah. I think I'd rather do without that yeah. than have all that. And I still do that when they're giving me these medicines. I'll look at the side effects. My mom keeps telling me, quit doing that. They have to do that. That means you're going to have it. Well, I still usually... There'll be something in there that I'll get. I just keep rebuking it. Mm -hmm. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou would prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. What's your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. We need to prosper in our mind and our will and emotions. Amen. We are to have the mind of Christ. That's right. Is Christ depressed? No. Is Christ anxious, fearful, no. worried, and all that other stuff? No. You know, we've all heard it and I've preached on it. Your attitude determines your attitude. Yes. You're only going to go as far as it. As a man thinketh, so, so, so is he. Yes. Right. Well, we need to prosper in our mind. We need to get our mind renewed according to the word of God. Amen. If God's word says it about me, that's who I am. That's what I am. I may not be there yet, but that's the path I'm on. Because I'm his workmanship, created for good works. And the good work that he began in me, he will bring to completion in the name of Jesus. He's the potter. We're the clay. Amen. And the molding and the shaping isn't always a whole lot of fun. Again, just because it's recent and all that, can't tell you how many times in the hospital, as I'm going through it, I'm just like, Lord Jesus. I said, if there's anything in me that's hindering healing, if there's any pride, any ego, any unforgiveness, bitterness, anything in me, reveal it to me. And he's sitting up there, no, I want you to suffer longer. No, that's not the God we serve. That's not the God we serve. And I'm not hearing nothing. So that lets me know that, and I'm not saying I'm perfect. Again, you go through what I've gone through and what I know many of you have. First thing you need to do is check your own heart. Because right. yeah. again, unforgiveness, bitterness, all that will clog the pipes, if you will, yeah. of receiving what God has for you. So be quick to repent. Be quick to forgive and to release others. Yeah. We've all probably heard the saying, you holding on to unforgiveness towards somebody is like you drinking Drano and thinking it's going to hurt them. Right. You're just hurting yourself. So that's God's will. So in part, we need to believe God that when we declare on earth as it is in heaven, that I am prospering, that I am going to be in health as my soul prospers. Mm -hmm. Believe God and declare you'll prosper in every way. Believe God for health in your physical body. Believe God for a sound mind. Yes, come on. I said a sound mind. Amen. You know, we as believers, we're to be fruitful, not fruity. Yeah, thank you. 
If you've been in the kingdom any length of time, I'm sure you've seen some Fruit Loop, granola, oh, yeah. cereal Christians. I think it was Kent Hagen used to say, bless their little heart and their stupid head or something. Well, that wasn't very Christ's life for a preacher. There was, uh, it was a few years ago on Facebook. Oh, it was when... Uh, President Trump was in, and you had these ladies screaming at the sky and just acting all stupid. And I called them idiots. Well, this Christian woman got offended because I, as a preacher, dared call somebody, whether they're sinners or not, an idiot. I said, well, you need to go to the Word of God and see what Jesus called some people. Snakes, vipers, brutal vipers. Whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones. She had a friend in me. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not saying you'll be mean for mean sake, but I don't care. There it is. <laughs> and if the Lord wants to convict me and deal with me on that one, he will. Tell your heart, bro. On earth as it is in heaven, there is no sickness in heaven. So there's no sickness in heaven. There's no lack in heaven. There's no depression in heaven. So you don't have to settle for it here. That's right. Yes, we live in a sin-fallen world where there is sickness, disease. There's lack out here. You don't have to partner with it. Amen. Government and economists and all I can say all that they want at different times. Doesn't mean I partner with it. Right. That's right. Right. Now I thank God. I, I mean I love that truck that I had. But I thank God. I led in the spirit in it. Didn't even realize it. Traded it in for that hybrid car Hyundai that gets 50 miles a gallon. Now gas is So Biden, go ahead and raise the stinking gas. It ain't affecting me. No, but it's affecting the rest of us. But all the hospital trips, three, four times a week, uh -huh. or when I was in, man, sorry I put some miles on that car, Greg. <laughs> Driving mine instead of hers. That's no, woman. it's fine. <laughs> but saved a whole lot. I mean, still got to put gas in it, but saved a whole lot. Amen. But we live in a sin-fallen world, so there's still going to be battles. There's still sickness, disease. Still lack out there that tries to attach itself to us, but we don't have to partner with it. Right. I said we don't have to partner with it. Right. Because we're part of a different kingdom. That's right. God's kingdom. Yep. We're his ambassadors. What's an ambassador? A representative of a kingdom. Right. So we are representatives of his kingdom. That's right. So when we declare on earth as it is in heaven, we're declaring and believing God for that to take place on this earth. And whatever it entails, where our needs may be. Continuing on, there's no addictions in heaven. Yes, That's come on. Right. Thank God. We're just addicted to Jesus. There's no gluttony in heaven. There's no lust. There's no perversion in heaven. There's no greed in heaven. There need not be in any of our lives either. Again, there's power in our words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. We are kings and priests, a royal priesthood. And when royalty makes a decree, it is a law, and it happens. Job twenty-two twenty-eight 28 says, You will also declare a thing, and it will be established for you. You need to learn now. You will also declare a thing on earth as it is in heaven, and it will be established for you. Again, I'm not saying you go out and decree any goofy thing. You just can't go out and covet. Well, I got Rick and Mary Lynn's house in Jesus' name. <laughs> Rick and Mary Lynn's house. They got a nice house. Nice big chickens. yard. You still got chickens and all that? <laughs> no, chickens have been gone. I was going to say I haven't seen any eggs in a while. <laughs> but we're not to go coveting other people's stuff. That's right. But if it's a promise in God's word, he speaks it to you by the Holy Spirit, you can decree it and believe God for it. You know, uh, well, it's been two, three months ago. I was first in the hospital. When I preached the message on speak to the mountain. Yeah, yeah, I remember. We're to do that out of Mark 11, 22 to 24. We're to speak to the mountain. 
If any of us just, if any of this just came automatically, Jesus would not have told his disciples to pray or say for his will to be done. We have to believe God for it. We've got to declare it. We have to do our part in resisting the enemy. I said we have to do our part in resisting the enemy. James 4, 7, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. Amen. If he isn't fleeing, what could that possibly mean? <laughs> Either you're not resisting him or you're not submitting to God. That's right. See, you can't walk and live your life holding hands with the enemy, nope. holding on to your pet demons, your addiction, your lust, your perversion, your greed, your gluttony, or whatever it is. On earth as it is in heaven, I'm free from this, but yet you're petting it. That's your pet sin. Now you need to let it go. We're not to eat or drink from the table of demons. Right. It's scripture. And I preached a message on that one. But we need to submit ourselves to God, resist the devil, and he's got to flee. Amen. I said he's got to flee. Amen. Well, I'm submitted to God. I resisted him, and he didn't. Well, keep resisting him. I said, keep resisting him. Rose was sharing how this was several years ago when we were at the other location, she had a bad knee and a lot of pain. And starting my eye, laid hands on her and prayed God healed her. Well, the pain started to come back. Well, she started resisting it. And what happened? It left. I've shared when Sharon had the blood clots. And we're believing God and all that. And God healed her. How I don't know, a few days, weeks later, they reappeared. I rebuked it in the name of Jesus. And they left. See, the enemy can put lying, false symptoms on you. There's people that have flat out got healed in services and church meetings before. Crusades, whatever. Flat out healed. Knew they were healed. And days or weeks later, symptoms come back and then they think, wow, I didn't really get healed. Yes, you did. You need to resist the devil. You need to rebuke that. Walk in the authority God's given you and watch the symptoms go. Amen. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Matthew eleven twelve 12 says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you've got to take your healing by force, your breakthrough by force. Your joy by force. Your peace by force. How do I do that? Again, by submitting yourself to God, resisting the devil. Give me my peace. Give me my joy. Give me my healing. Get out of here, you lying, low-life devil, you. The enemy will do whatever he can to come against your health, your mind, your prosperity. You have to be aggressive against him. I've said it for years. If you're playing church, you're going to get your tail whipped. That's right. It's not the time at all. And even as the time of Jesus' return comes closer, and we're closer than we've ever been, right. I don't know man knows the day or the hour, but we're closer than we've ever been. That's right. And it isn't time to be playing. I'm going to say it again. It isn't time to be playing. Right. We need to be serious about our walk with God. We need to be serious about continuing to grow and develop in our faith. We need to be serious about walking in obedience. Yeah. God doesn't bless disobedience. No, we don't. Partial disobedience is still disobedience. That's right. So if he says say it, you need to say it. If he says do it, you need to do it. Yeah. So the days of playing church, they've been way over. That's the one thing I love about Kent Christmas. He ain't playing. <laughs> Even some, I forget what it was he said in the one that I watched last night. He said something or whatever, and he goes, if that's the kind of church you want, he said, there's the door. Same man that used to have 60-some people and then was worried about you know, whether the crowds were going to keep coming. But still, that's the stand because he preaches the uncompromised truth of God's word. I'll always do the same regardless of how many. See, sin in the camp can hinder what God wants to do. I'm going to say that to ask Aiken. Mm -hmm. Sin in the camp mm -hmm. can affect what God wants to do. Yeah. Yeah. Sad to say, there's been churches, and there's been some local, I've heard the testimonies of them, where the leaders 
have been involved in adulterous affairs and have spread through the church like gangrene. I assure you, this man and that woman, we're living right. We're living holy. As I've said before, there ain't no woman or man ever going to come between us. Ain't no woman worth me destroying my marriage or that woman or this church. Amen. Oh, don't get prideful because da, 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 da. I'm smarter than that been through too much I know the life that she's lived I know the again when we first met and I was 16 she's 14 how her mom was shot and killed by her stepdad one of the worst things you could ever go through she was remembering this week her mom would be 80 coming up wow. but was murdered at 36 how could I dare dare have an affair or ever divorce her or put her through any kind of hell after the hell that she's already gone through and Amen. other stuff in her teenage years with her dad and yeah. just don't need to get into all that. But it ain't happening. So I assure you that one will never happen. Amen. I said that one will never happen. Amen. 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 But if you think you can sit here and mess around and have affairs or do this other stuff and it not affect what's going on, it can and it will. Right. And I pray to God that he'll reveal it He'll deal with you first on it. Mm -hmm. And even preachers and different ones. He gives them out of his mercy and his grace. He gives them opportunity to lay it down, to repent, to stop. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, he'll expose it. Mm -hmm. And he is exposing it. And many prophets lately especially have been talking how not just government leaders, but leaders in the church are going to start, I'm paraphrasing, dropping like flies if they don't stop sinning. Come on. Agree. Yeah. Hallelujah. And as much as we, you know, pray for healing and believe God with us for that, continue to lift us up to live right. To continue to live right and holy before God. Pleasing before Him. We pray the same for you as well. But on earth as it is in heaven. But you have to determine to take a hold of your health, prosperity. The enemy is a trespasser. He has no right what belongs to you, but he will take what you allow. Yes. I said he will take what you allow. Yes. We're not to even give him a foothold. I said we're not to give him a foothold. Yes. So you need to stand your ground and declare that God's will is being done and will be done on this earth as it is in, as, as, as it is in heaven. Yes. Lack of oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> in heaven there's no lack of peace so many especially the last year with COVID instead of watching the news now they got another one coming around yeah. Yeah. right before the holiday right before the holiday yeah. and they took in <laughs> anybody ever had an opportunity to get into fear and be me when uh Praise God, it's coming up, my immune system. But they told me when I was in the hospital, if you get a cold, you could die. You get any variants of COVID, you won't leave this hospital a lot. Well, I rebuke that, and I'm not getting in agreement with that in the name of Jesus. Yeah, use wisdom. That's why there for a few weeks, I was wearing a mask. If I get close to you, so I'm going to use some wisdom. Being things are coming up and all that. Again, I ain't going to get all up in your faces and all that, but got to use some wisdom but there's peace in heaven so there needs to be peace on earth Jesus after all is the prince of peace there's no sorrow in heaven people don't get anxious and worry in heaven then don't lose your peace here don't live in sorrow Again, there's, see, you lose a loved one, there's going to be grief there. And you've got to go through the process. It's not weak to go through the process of it. When we lost our grandson, Jace, we went through the process of it. I mean, I didn't, you know, go down all these steps because you don't have, I know, different steps and all that sometimes of the grieving process. So I didn't sit here and get a book out and all this kind of stuff. Well, I'm here now. No, it's just you go through it. Right. 
And there's times stuff would hit you like a wave and then it's gone again and right, we're fine. There for a while I had you know, the picture of him up for quite a while and it was therapeutic and all that and then the time came, put it away. If I wanted to leave it out, I could leave it out. It didn't matter. But we're not to live in sorrow. We're not to live anxious and worried. When Jesus was on this earth, he demonstrated the kingdom. He demonstrated on earth as it is in heaven. He did that every time he healed the sick. He did that every time he cast out a devil. He did that every time he raised the dead. He did that every time he performed a miracle. He did that every time he multiplied food and brought about provision where there was lack. He's our example. And then he sent the disciples out to do it, and they did the same thing. And every time you heal the sick, it's on earth as it is in heaven. Every time you cast out a devil, oh, I can cast out a devil. Yeah, you can cast out a devil. Can't run from it and cast it out. Come on. You know, you got to cast it out. You're demonstrating the kingdom. You're demonstrating on earth as it is in heaven. Again, you need to know the God-given authority you have. Luke 10, 19, I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing by any means shall harm you. When dealing with demon possessed, there's no demons in heaven. But you have authority over them here on earth. So when dealing with someone possessed or demonized, you're exercising God's authority over them. And when you tell them to go, they got to go. And I know certain ones that it's only one time. And it just it still trips me out some of the teachings and stuff that people do. Something maybe mentioned one time in scripture that people make a whole doctrine out of. Right, right. One time Jesus asked or communicated with demons, and that's one time, and legion, for we are many. And yet you got some that all they want to do is converse with demons, ask them their names and all this kind of stuff. What do you think they can't lie? Now you got to be led of the Lord, and if He lead, does lead you to do that, then that's then you do that. And I kind of joke about it, but I haven't seen anybody start a mud spitting in your eye blind healing ministry. <laughs> Jesus did do that. <laughs> I forget who it was. It might have been Heidi Baker. Somebody I heard that one time God did tell them. To put spit in somebody's blind eye. And she's arguing with God about it. I'm not 100% sure it's Heidi, but it was, I remember it was a female because I remember that much. And she's going back and forth with the Lord on it. Finally, she did it. God healed her. Healed the person's blind eye. But you need to be led in the Lord in. You just can't. Just because God heals one person one way one time doesn't mean he's always going to do that. Now, there are certain individuals he may primarily use you for diabetes or deaf ears or whatever it is. And there may be the majority of the time he may do it a certain way. But we need to be led of the Lord in it. And I'd still rather, <laughs> I'd still rather somebody miss it start now. But at least they got out of the boat. Because if we're all open for correction and direction and all that, God will use us. God will use you. In Matthew 10, 8, he said, Jesus said, and again, it wasn't a request. Heal the sick. I can't heal anybody. He said, heal the sick. In and of your own flesh. No, I couldn't heal a fly. But with the anointing of God and being led by the Spirit, I can lay hands on the sick, so can you, and expect them to recover. But he said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Amen. Luke 9.2 says he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. We're to do the same thing. Years ago it was on, there's some other, somebody started up some Christian group thing, social media thing. And there was a bunch of cessationists, Baptists, and all that on there. And I don't know how I got into it, but I quoted one of those. They said he was speaking that to them, 
not us. Because they didn't believe that God will still use us to heal the sick and all that. Well, I guess he forgot about Matthew 28, 18. It says, Jesus came and spoke to them, the disciples, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to, uh, this is verse 20, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. What's some of the all things he commanded them? Heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. Freely you've received, freely give. And he says that I've commanded you, lo, and I'm with you always, even till the end of the age. Jesus' will, God's will doesn't automatically just happen. Say that again, God's will automatically just doesn't happen. He's not willing that any perish, but that all come to repentance. But is everybody going to get saved? No. But how are they going to hear unless there's a preacher or somebody else to tell them about Jesus? And that they can be born again and saved and don't have to die in their sin. So we're his ambassadors. We're his witnesses. And we need to be used of God. And part of being used by God is that we declare on earth as it is in heaven. And that we believe God regardless of what we're going through, regardless of how we feel, regardless of what we see. If it wasn't in heaven, we shouldn't have to mess with it here. That's right. Again, I get it. We live in a sin fallen world and all that. Well, again, that's where we submit to God, resist the enemy and everything else. We pray for our government leaders. We get involved in those that feel led to get involved in the government. Whatever. And nobody should say, well, I don't feel led to vote. No, you need to get the lead out and you need to vote. <laughs> Thank you. Come on. But those that God may call to government positions. We need to get involved. You can make a difference. I said we can make a difference. Yes, we need to pray. Yes, we need to decree and declare, but we need to get involved as well. And it's the same thing in churches. And it's still in uh, so many churches, it's still a small percentage that will come out for prayer. You know, I can have a, a prophet come in and they, oh, we're going to have a prophetic meeting this weekend or whatever. The majority come out. Well, we got prayer Monday night. Six, seven. But I will say this. The majority of churches, I think it is like 10% that will come out for prayer. So if it was a church of 500, there may be 50, 100, 10. Well, we got, I don't know, maybe 30 people here. We've had 8 to 10. Pretty consistent coming out for prayer. So we're doing good. Yeah. But we can still do better. Wednesday nights have improved greatly where we used to just have a handful. Same thing, eight, ten. So I want to encourage any of you that can, start coming out to prayer. Start coming out to midweek. Get involved. And uh, now that Charlotte's back there, well, I'll pray us out and then uh, make that announcement again about the women's thing. Yes. So you can make your way up here. For uh, Christmas, do you guys prefer a separate night, like on a Saturday, or doing it after a Sunday service when we're already here, having like food and fellowship and all that? Is there a preference? I know there's times we've done it on Saturdays, and then a few times we've done it like right after a Sunday service, just because I know the holidays can get busy and we're already here. Is a we'd like the Sunday service. How many prefer Sunday? That's what I told right? We're already here. Yeah. And just okay. right after yeah. service. Well, that's what we'll do. A lot of us travel like you guys. Know. Yeah. This year we're not. Man. I think it was the uh, Sunday. Christmas is a Saturday, I think. Saturday. Saturday, yeah. The previous Sunday, the 18th, is what I was looking at this morning. Okay. So Sunday, the 18th. I'll get a flyer together on it and all that. And we'll do the church will provide a ham and do some side dishes but you know we'll just have a we'll do it that Sunday have a Christmas service and then afterwards we'll have the fellowship and dinner and that kind of stuff um, December 19th 
Okay, the 19th. It's the 19th. Yeah. And Shark, go ahead and share about the other thing. We're going to do our women's revealing of our secret sisters December 11th at 4 o'clock at the Cracker Barrel in is that Reynolds? Pickerington. 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 Actually, it's more Reynolds. Is it yeah. more Reynolds? Off of 256. I'll play it safe and say that one. Right off of 256, off the freeway. Um, so, those of you who are able to come, which I'm praying everybody can come, um, make sure that you let like myself. You sure can come. Let them let you come as yourself, okay? We only make you wear a Where, um, but let Tappy or myself know because I'm going to see if there's a way I can get there earlier than 4 and maybe get there at 3.30 and try to get the table for however many that we need. If you do not, if you were not involved in the Secret Sisters, I still want to encourage you to come because we'd love just to have a time of fellowship.